Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a water in oil balm ointment. Now these are the types of products that are those soft type of balms that never truly set hard but also don't melt when it gets warm. Uh, a lot of people also refer to the Lucas Pawpaw ointment as a benchmark standard. So we're going to be creating this sort of a, a balm ointment today, which is actually a water and oil emulsion with a very small water content. So this is the product we'll be creating today here. You can see it's a semi-soft balm type ointment. It won't melt in warmer weather. It won't set harder in cooler climates. It will remain this consistency across all climates and it takes some special ways of formulating it to make this type of product which I'm going to show you today. So here I have the uh, oil phase, the liquid portion measured out and I just want to talk you through a couple of important selections I have in here. I've used caprylic capric triglycerides, it's a very readily available lipid uh, medium skin fill. In here I also have Coco Caprylate, a very light skin fill lipid. This is very important because lipids are making up the majority of this formula. Now you can alter these and that will alter your skin fill, but what I'm creating today is quite a nice feeling emollient um, ointment. You can of course make it heavier with the use of more plant oils. In here I also have some apricot kernel oil and I'm going to add some shea butter. Now these are considered relatively light feeling vegetable oils uh, and of course shea butter does have quite a light skin feel as well. Very important and you'll see in the formula that we've provided that we've limited the butter content to 10%. Do not go over 10% butter content in this formula uh, because when you do then you will make a product that is susceptible to high temperatures it will start to melt and that's because the butter has such a low melting point so limit your butter input to 10% any other vegetable oil should be liquid otherwise you will get altering viscosities in, in different temperatures and that's not desirable now to this I'm going to be adding some Arlacel. Now this is an important ingredient because it's a water and oil liquid emulsifier blend. It will help stabilize the emulsion that forms. Next I'm going to add some glycerol stearate and again this is a low HLB water and oil emulsifier and because it's in a solid form it's going to help us build viscosity to this product while also helping to stabilize the water and oil emulsion that forms. Now I'm going to add beeswax. Now you can add other, bee, other waxes. I'm using beeswax because it's quite a flexible beeswax which gives you a very nice skin feel when you rub it in. It also means the end product has that real ointment consistency. If you use other waxes, make sure they're reasonably flexible. Uh, a carnauba or candelilla wax, for example, are too rigid, too hard. So you won't get that nice playtime that you want from an ointment. Now you can increase or decrease the beeswax content that will alter the end viscosity of the product. So that's up to you uh, and you would simply then make up the remainder with liquid lipids. So more or less vegetable oil to make up or alter that beeswax content. Finally, I'm going to add some lecithin. Now this is going to turn it a bit of a yellow color. Uh, I'm adding it because lecithin gives a beautiful cushiony feel to the formula. It also has a low HLB value and it uh, so it increases the, the pleasantness of the skin feel and it also helps stabilize the emulsion that forms. So we've got a lot of stability enhancing factors in here which help maintain that viscosity over all types of temperatures. Um, to give that same consistency whether it's hot or cold so that the balm doesn't turn liquidy and also doesn't turn hard in cooler climates and also remains stable over a prolonged shelf life. So this is all of our oil phase ingredients that we're going to be heating at the start 
And here I have already measured out my water-based extract in this case and in the example we've done we're using a pore pore glycerin based extract and that's just in keeping with the theme of the ointment that so many people like to create at home. Next we heat the two phases and once we've melted all the solids in our lipid phase we can add the water phase to the lipid phase, stir and our emulsion will form. Now once combined, we remove from the heat, continue stirring, and as it cools, the emulsion will form. Remember to keep stirring gently as it cools. Stirring as it cools will not only help it cool slightly faster, but also make sure that the emulsion forms properly to stabilize the water-based extracts within the emulsion. Remember we're creating a water and oil emulsion here, it's a balm ointment so there's only a very small portion of water that we need to stabilise within the very large continuous oil phase. Now one of the great things about this as well is that it means we don't need to worry about preservative. Where you are keeping that water based input at 5% or less, you won't need a preservative, this will be self preserving. If you do increase either the extract or water content above 5%, you may start to need a preservative, so include one in your formula to suit uh, the formula that you're creating. But where it's 5% or less, there is not enough available water in the formula to allow uh, microorganisms to grow, so it will be self-preserving. One final step is to add some antioxidant. So we're using tocopherol. And you will need to pack this product up while it's still molten. If you're putting it into jars, if you're packing it into tubes, then it can set because the appearance won't matter. So as you can see, it is starting to set now. I'd need to heat this up slightly again if I was pouring up into jars to get a nice, clean looking finish. And of course, full viscosity will be achieved overnight. So you can see the product today still looks a little liquidy. It is still warm but it will set to that beautiful balm ointment consistency tomorrow. And that's really all there is to it. So a couple of important things to remember with this formula. You'll need to use suitable water in oil emulsifiers. Now the formula I've created for you is very natural with natural and naturally derived ingredients. You can of course use some other materials which will alter the skin feel and viscosity of the end product. But a couple of really important materials in there is the Arla Cell, which is your water and oil liquid emulsifier. It's a blend of emulsifiers so it helps with dense packing at the interface for good emulsion stability and it also makes the end product have a beautiful play time which you want for an ointment when you rub on the skin. I've used beeswax to build viscosity, a flexible wax so that again you've got good play time, a nice cushiony feel as you rub it onto the skin which is what you want your ointments to feel like. I've also included some glycerol stearate. This has also boosted the viscosity consistency of the end product to help it harden. These materials help this product maintain its consistency in warm and cool climates. So you can alter the beeswax input slightly or use another wax of a similar melting point to beeswax. Again, I recommend if you're going to change the beeswax for another wax, select one one that has a bit of flexibility in it so that you get that nice ointment consistency when it's rubbed into the skin. Another really important thing to remember, I've limited the butter input to 10%. If you use more than 10% of low melting point butters, you will have an end product that turns more liquid in warm climates and that's not desirable. So limit your butter input to 10% so that you don't get that temperature variability. Another final point, 
I've limited the water glycerin extracts to 5% and that makes it a self-preserving formula. I also then don't need to check or adjust pH. So if you want to create a similar ointment type formula with this consistency, there's some of the key ingredients that you shouldn't change in the formula. Or like I say, if you do alter the beeswax, pick another flexible wax that helps you maintain that beautiful cushiony playtime. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation on creating natural water and oil balm ointments. Happy formulating!